Now we look at another incident early in the Gospel of Mark. It follows immediately upon the one we've just looked at. Um, that incident closes, and verse 13 says, And Jesus went out again beside the sea. So in this little fishing village, now he's gone out to stand by the, by the Sea of Galilee. And the whole crowd gathered around him, and he taught them. Jesus' reaction when he sees the crowd is either to heal them or to teach them, which is a form of healing, a deeper and more lasting form of healing, to tell them about the Father, to tell them about the Father's plan for their life. Uh, and so he's teaching, okay? Uh, then he saw Levi, son of Alphaeus, sitting at the tax booth, and he said to him, follow me. And he got up and followed him. Like the first four, remember? Got up, followed him. So, what did Levi do? He had a party. Jesus is calling me. Let's celebrate. Anybody fighting with a vocation? Pray to St. Uh, Matthew here. Um, that's, my gosh, the Son of God is calling me. You know? Uh, and so, uh, now, who was at this? Uh, he's a tax collector, remember. So tax collectors and sinners were also sitting with Jesus and his disciples. For there were many who followed him. Who would follow Jesus? People who know they need a break. They need forgiveness for sins. They just need the help with their life. Uh, uh, those are the ones who first see who he really is. Those who think they got their act all together, poor folk, uh, they, they don't hate him. They hate him. Because he's taken away their influence and their leadership, and he's teaching a different way. And so the text says he had a party. The scribes of the Pharisees, that means the theologians that belong to the Pharisaical party, uh, saw that he was eating with sinners and tax collectors. And they said to his disciples, why does he eat with tax collectors and sinners? Why didn't they go ask Jesus? They didn't want to get that far into the party, I guess. They're on the outside somewhere, and in a warm climate, you know, there's no big doors and stuff, so they, they know what's going on. Uh, now, Jesus heard this, and he said to them, those who are well have no need of a physician, but those who are sick do. I have call, come to call not the righteous, but sinners. So he takes this tax collector who's working for the Roman occupation forces, and he's probably pretty honest, but he doesn't have to be, because he makes his money on the difference between what he tells the Romans he's going to collect and what he actually collects. Well, the Romans tell him what he actually collects. They don't care how much the Romans, how much he collects, so long as they get what they want. If he wants to collect some more, because they're not going to pay him very much. That's why they were so hated, see. So, now this is a vocation story. Uh, we've seen vocation stories. We saw them mending their necks. They were at their occupation, and the caller comes Jesus calls them, they drop everything and go. Okay? Uh, we've seen this theme. I want to show you an example of it in uh, uh, the book of Kings. Huh? It's the way Elijah calls Elisha. Because it's very much like this story of Matthew. Leaving there, that is Elijah, he came on Elisha, son of Shaphat, as he was plowing behind twelve yoke of oxen. So he's busy. He's at work. He himself being with the twelve. Elijah passed near to him, threw his cloak over him. Elijah left his oxen and ran after Elijah. Let me kiss my father and mother, then I will follow you, he said. Elijah says, go back. For have I done anything to you? Elisha turned away, took the pair of oxen and slaughtered them. He used the plow for cooking the oxen, and he gave it to his men who ate, 
He then rose and fought at Elijah and became his serpent. You see the rhythm? I'm busy. God calls. I drop everything, but I'm so excited. I have a party. Just like Matthew. So Elijah. Elisha, rather, has a party. When I was called to the priesthood, all my friends threw a party. I guess they do that a lot. Uh, it was very nice, you know. They were all my, well, high school and college friends. I went off in second year of college. Uh, but we had a party. They were all good, devout, mostly Irish, Catholic, middle class, upper middle class folk in my neighborhood there. And they're all my buddies and they had this party. They gave me a watch. Now, you see, now here, uh, the, uh, it's, it's, uh, Matthew who throws the party. But it's very interesting, isn't it? To see the way that God he called those two, he called those four fishermen. They dropped everything and followed him. He calls uh, Matthew. He drops everything and follows him. He has a party first. Why does he want the party? Well, for a lot of reasons. And Jesus is there. Now, there are a lot of people there whose lives are not very savory, if you know what I mean. Some are tax collectors. Some are prostitutes. Some are just sort of maybe small-time crooks. You don't know what they are. And they don't think they have a dime. They don't, you know, they're going to, life is lousy. They're going to do what they can, you know, live the way they're living. They can't live any other way, and especially in that culture. If you've got a reputation, for instance, surely as a prostitute, it's over. That's your life. You can have a change of heart, but nobody will ever marry you. And you'll be considered a prostitute the rest of your life. In that kind of a culture. People have memories. I've told you before the story of the, the family that lived in uh, Tekua, the old Tekua, where Amos was born. You can see it as you stand in Bethlehem. It's across the valley. And a family, oh, well, in my day, it was a hundred and something years already, had moved into Bethlehem. And they were still called the strangers. Can you imagine? So, nobody will forget that these people were tax collectors and prostitutes. They're not going to have an easy life. But they know Jesus. And they know his love. And little by little, their own change of life and their own love will win over many others. And that's the whole point. And so, Matthew is at his work as uh, collecting tolls, the toll booth, tax booth, they call it in this text, uh, and Jesus just calls him. He is so thrilled. He drops everything and he has a party. Now, what can we gain from this? You see, in the first story, we saw the man had his sins forgiven and he could get up and walk. In this story, the man is called. He's so thrilled he has a party and he goes then and, uh, 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 First, there's this objection, you see. Uh, the uh, Pharisees saw that he was eating with sinners and tax collectors. They said to his disciples, Why does he eat with tax collectors and sinners? When Jesus heard this, he said, Those who are well have no need of a physician, but the sick do. I have come to call not the righteous, but sinners to heal. Now, there is a line in the book of Exodus where the Lord says, I am Adonai, your healer. By claiming to be a healer, he's opening them up to a dialogue. Are you claiming to be some kind of a healer? What kind of a healer? Where did you get that? Our God is a healer. And uh, little by little, lead them, but know that have none of it. And this happens so often. The Son of Man is Lord of the Sabbath. You know, you've got power to forgive sins. You see, automatically or very, very soon in, in Mark, there is this revelation of who Jesus is. You see, he heals people. He drives out demons. He forgives sins. Um, and uh, it's there to see. But it's hidden. Very human. Uh, 
and they don't get it, or they don't want to get it, because he's not going to force it on them. You know, a little while later, there's going to be another one. I think it's the very next text in Mark. Um, um, let me see. I'll take a quick look for you here. Uh, yeah. The Pharisees and their disciples fast. So they say, "How co- and John the Baptist people fast. How come you and your, your Jesus, you don't fast? Jesus says, can the friends of the bridegroom fast when the bridegroom's there? They'll be taken away and then they'll fast. You're a bridegroom? Are you the bridegroom of the people? Are you claiming to be God? Are you claiming to be the Lord, Adonai? Or, you see, he gives these beautiful openings, but they won't take them. You're claiming to be some kind of a bridegroom? What kind of a bridegroom? And they won't follow up so that he could lead them. My friends, we're called. Do we waste time questioning? Or do we answer? This is the call of your basic vocation. To be married or single. To be a priest or a religious. Uh, and then there's calls within those. Do we dilly-dally? Do we argue? Or do we just follow? Jesus loves those who just follow. You know, it's so beautiful. You know, St. Therese once said, you know, I wish God, St. Therese said once, I wish God didn't know everything. I'd love to do something for him that he didn't know it was me. That's love. You see? That's love. Do we follow Jesus like that? You see, these stories are here to to open up our hearts and to challenge us. We have these two stories here. One is a story of forgiveness and healing. Okay? Uh, He forgives and then he heals the paralytic. And the second is calling somebody and a celebration that's open to anybody who wants to come. Anybody. Well, of course, Matthews is tax collector, and a lot of most of his friends are in that profession. And I suppose, you know, they're that part of the society. And so, and then there's some prostitutes around, uh, and they're being called. All they have to do is take one look at Jesus, and they melt. This is a man. This is a man who doesn't want to use me. He wants to save me. What a thrill. What a thrill. Um, And so we have these two vocation stories, as it were. Um, One is the forgiveness and the healing of a man, which is vocation in the broad sense. And the second one is the call of Matthew, who's at his post like... uh, Elisha was at his plowing. He's called. He leaves it and follows. The Lord, some of you, he's calling when you hear this. You might be young. You're wondering what to do. Go ask him and tell him that as soon as it's clear, you'll do it. And he'll make it clear. He'll make it clear. And then celebrate. Amen.